something strange going on here. We're in Berlin, I think, but we have a Danish photographer and we're interviewing a Danish gentleman called Niels Speyer and we're going to talk about bike squares and uh, I want to ask you to tell us about it. What is unique, what's different? Yeah. Excite us, please. What, what is really different here, what we've done is that um, we made the first all-electrical e-bike. So we're taking the chain out of the, of the equation. So we are not pulling on the back wheel with both a mechanical force and an electrical force, but only with one force, the electrical. So what's going on is that the use of pedaling is actually pedaling the pedals around like you used to generating electrical power right here in the crankbox. So from that point on, everything is controlled by our electrical controller and everything is electric. That means much more control over what's going on in the back wheel as much as it is of what's going on in the crankbox. That's the counterforce that you feel when you're driving. This bicycle feels exactly like any ordinary bicycle to drive, but we have all the advantages of having full electronic control over all aspects of it. As you notice on the steering, we don't have mechanical gearings up here since there are no mechanical parts. We don't, you don't have to operate some mechanical parts, some electronic parts and mix it all together. You just have completely gearing, uh, stepless, continuous gearing, all automatic gearing, that's much easier. On one side and on the other side you can turn on the bicycle and you can decide how, how you want to multiply your power with the help of, of the assistance from the battery. That's absolutely so, amazing. That comes in the category of, it's obvious, why didn't anyone do it? Why yeah. didn't I do it? <laughs> I don't, I <laughs> that's don't know. wonderful. We just, yeah. clean, we just cleaned up the electrical bicycle. That's, that's made, made the polished product. Uh, the range? What's the range? And then up. The range, like any, <laughs> any other bi electrical bicycle, depends on the battery. If you put on a, a, a big battery, we get the same range as other electrical bicycles. What, this is an ordinary. Are sale, are they, or this is an dream? ordinary uh, battery. Sorry, excuse me. Is this something for sale or is it a dream? No, this is what is for sale. Is the drive system. So oh, this part right. with the motor and the battery yeah, and nice. and the interface. So that's why it's not fair to ask you yeah. The range. I wonder if you could bring the whole bike and the no. standard batteries. We okay. expect our clients to be bicycle manufacturers doing yeah. bicycles and make them look very nice. Uh, this is just a test bike. Well. Vary from ones that are pedelex to ones that uh, you only pedal in emergency or something. Yeah, yeah. this this very bike we have some uh, community help us using that uh, in a city of Denmark, driving around uh, helping helping people in the city. Um, we have all of three wheel bikes where actually they have uh, extra benefit of not having the the straight line from the the pedals to the back wheel, but you can actually start making different designs of bicycles because you're not constrained by the chain anymore. So it also opens up uh, new possibilities in the bicycle design. And is it something that you think could be useful in underdeveloped countries as a pedal generator for your computer and lighting? Or uh, have you thought laterally into any of those other things? Or yeah, it's, plenty to do in the meantime? It's, it's absolutely possible. It's also possible to use it as an exercise device but uh, that's not the market we're looking into. We, we want to help people commute, uh, especially commuting uh, in big cities yeah. and uh, solve uh, problems with pollution and stuff like that. And we also want to help some people that might not be able to bicycle today to actually do it because they have a better product with a better feeling and more control. Okay, so could you get me really clear about what the benefits are then? Because I could imagine this might be lower cost, I could imagine it's more reliable. You've talked about how it functions rather ni more nicely or more versatile way. You know, you could adjust it so you have to pedal really hard if you want exercise or something. Yeah. Um, well, but but in, in the marketplace, have you a feel for what people will perceive as the most important benefit? Yeah, I think we have two, two sectors here. One is that we have a um, commuting bicycle, which is just nicer because we have one system working in, in both ends in, instead of two systems working together. So we can make a, a more fluid, it would be like a, a perfect automatic gearing in a car when that came in, in the 70s, 80s. So uh, we get a better feeling, a, a better bicycling experience. That's one, one part of it when you commute to work. Um, and the other end is, uh, it could be elderly people. It's more simplified, it's actually nicer to use. A little like um, the electrical hand blender compared to the old mechanical ones. They don't have to pull levers or do anything and 
they could, it, someone who's very feeble could, could, yeah. could be tolerant of that. Yes. So that's one end of the spectrum. And the other end is the geometries, the fact that you can suddenly make different bicycle designs. So then again, uh, bicycle manufacturers designing bicycles for handicap, for example, with a low entrance point or three wheels where you, you then you have suddenly have other possibilities of making designs adequate for people with different needs. No, that's absolutely, and I think that reads on to other things. We at ID TechX, we're analysts, we travel our lives away, and we've recently, for instance, been in Japan, we go there often, we've got a Japanese office. I interviewed the man who's um, set up Terra Motors, uh, and uh, he is uh, largely doing it on a charitable basis, but basically he thinks that three-wheelers uh, can be modernized and he's got people now in Bangladesh, India, all over the place and the figures are amazing, they're huge. I mean in Bangladesh he says his people have um, got statistics that they're importing half a million um, from the electric um, pedal three-wheelers electrically assisted um, a year as taxes, you know, it's the tuk tuk alternative that's electric, it's the uh, equivalent of an electric rickshaw. Uh, but they're basically this sort of hub motor. I mean, even in London, it's been uh, an empowerment thing because uh, you've got a slip of a girl peddling four me fat men around London as a, as a business, and she couldn't be in that business before, but now, thanks to an electric drive, she can be. So, uh, India, they, they Terra Motors were saying, the number of uh, polluting tuk-tuks to be replaced is about five and a half million a year, uh, and in the Philippines, it's about 3.2 million total, not per year, but they're massive fiddlers. So, would you think that you could contribute something to that world where the, it's three wheels, not two? I mean, it seems to be the same thing. Well, I, I think that three wheels is, is definitely part of the market, the small vehicle, maybe even covered vehicles and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah. But the, the, where we, the place where we can contribute is to get more people commuting by bicycles, yeah. making it yeah. Yeah. easier to approach this, this kind of product without being a cyclist, you know? It's, yeah. it's, more, yeah. it's, yeah. it's getting like a household where yeah, uh, and it's yeah. like your blender in the kitchen and stuff like that you acquire it in the same way yeah, so this, this sort of thing should be the free you know the higher bikes they have them in Berlin don't they that are electrical but this could be an advance on that but where I come from London they're not electrical they're just pedal bikes they're very heavy ones and so it means not many people can well that but they're very popular but we copied Paris they did it first of course but a very they, they have a limitation for people who are not very strong a very important advantage we have in that case is that without all the mechanical parts, we have much less maintenance. So especially if you want to use it as a fleet oh, bicycle, you don't you need all that maintenance, people driving around, putting oil on the chains and you know, repairing it. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a big deal for us, uh, the maintenance part, when we sell fleets. Of course, yes, absolutely, excellent. And if it were, yeah, if it could be dismountable as, or even in that form used as a generator, I mean, there's no reason why it could be used as a generator, so you can disconnect those connections yeah. and put it into something else. Excellent. Oh, that's very interesting. Wonderful. Good luck to you. Marvellous. And so you're really an intellectual property company or you're selling the actual device, but you're not going to sell the bicycle or the bike. Yeah, we've actually found out that uh, we need to get our clients up and up and driving the bicycle. So when we thought we were just selling the device... So you have to do for, pull through marketing, even if you're not going we to have, We have to sell some bicycles so they can get up riding the bicycle very fast. Yeah. So that we would do in the start. But yeah. But and our core business pull back. So it's pull through one. marketing. We yeah. sell this one with a battery and uh, and the motor. Nice, very nice indeed. Well done. Congratulations. Absolutely excellent.